why do you guys have been winning um, a, a lot of close, low-scoring games at uh, at pitcher-friendly course field? What is it like for, for the guys to keep punching and counter-punching and come from behind and win an old-fashioned course field game? Yeah, you're right, Thomas. I think uh, you've seen that out of our group, that the, you know, the resiliency uh, in a number of games here uh, has shown up, which is a, you know, it's a character trait, uh, you know, to, to the 26 guys on the team. And uh, again, I think the guys know uh, that, uh, that a ball game is never over. Uh, you know, they play, you know, all 54 outs. And if we have to go 10, we'll go 10. And we'll keep uh, we'll keep battling, but uh, the resiliency, uh, the fight, uh, the counter punching, uh, especially these last two nights, has been evident. So, again, I think it's a, a character trait of this group of players. When you look at uh, how this team has performed at home, and it's a lot better than on the road. But one guy that seems to right now be carrying his stroke at home and on the road is Ramal Tapia. Um, what is it about him? It looked like today he was intent on going the other way and going with the pitches. Well, you know, with, with Tap, you know, he has the bat to ball skill that we talked about. And, uh, you know, he's able to, you know, use, uh, you know, use the bat, uh, you know, on the ball away from him to drive the ball to left field. You know, we saw that a couple of times today. Uh, we saw it yesterday with a, you know, with a big drive to left center. And if they throw him something soft inside, he's got the ability to turn on it, which he did today also, and hit the ball in the right center. So uh, this guy's a hitter, right? Uh, he was uh, he was a minor league hitter, and now that he's finally got his feet on the ground as a big leaguer, I think the you know the hitting tool is starting to show up. He's right at 300. The on base is 340. Uh, you know he just continues to solidify himself as a as a guy that's going to collect hits at the top of the order. So, uh, you know, he's doing his part, you know, again, uh, for us to have a good offense, it's, it's going to take the collect uh, the collective group, but, you know, Tap is doing his part uh, to help us, to help us win and to help us score runs. Okay. And just a couple more for me. Um, to, today you were able to bring um, Blackman off the bench. Um, what is it like to, have a day where a lot of you depth guys perform well, put you in position to win, and be able to call, play that card at the end. Well, uh, again, with a with a four man bench uh, in a National League game, it, it, it gets a little dicey, uh, you know, depending on how the game goes. But you know, last night we saw Hampson off the bench with a with a big triple, uh, Charlie off the bench today with the with the clutch base hit to win the game. Uh, as as guys go through this, they know that. Uh, in a National League game uh, with a four-man bench, they're probably going to get in the game. So when, so when the media asked me a, a day off for so and so, it's not really a day off because they're, you know, because they're going to get in the game and they're going to get mentally prepared to pinch hit or double switch like we did with Mac today. Uh, it just gives them a little breather at the start of the day and maybe overnight, uh, knowing that they're not going to start the next day, they don't have to start that preparation. But all our guys are ready to help. I mean, that, that's the thing that. You know, again, the team aspect of the guys, uh, the the twelve position players. You know, they know the one way or another, uh, they're they're probably going to have some sort of impact on the game. Uh, it'd be nice to give Chuck a full day off or Mac a full day off, but uh, you know, when it, when the game unfolds, uh, it's usually not going to happen. Hey, last one for me on Mac. Um, I know that. When you have a little bit of a leg muscle issue that never totally goes away, were you kind of hoping to stay off him a little bit today? Although he no. did in later. Well, no, Max, fine. Thomas, he's fine. Uh, he's yeah, he's uh, no ill effects from the from the con. He's fine. Thank you. Go to Patrick next. Go ahead, Pat. Hey, buddy. Uh, getting back to to Rymel for a moment. I know I asked you this probably a couple weeks ago. He's got a mess of doubles lately, and he seems to really tr use his speed to his advantage lately. Uh, when he drives that ball the opposite way, I mean, he's out of the box quickly, rounding first quickly, and, and taking the, the second base. Is that something, a skill that you think he's developed better over the last, say, season and a half or so? You know, I think he has that in him, but I know that, 
you know, since he's here at, at Coors Field and, uh, you know, the, the vastness of the outfield, uh, the vastness of the outfield and, and where uh, at times certain teams play him, uh, you know, when he rips the ball down the, you know, down the third baseline, he's thinking two right out of the box. And, you know, I think he's learned to, uh, you know, cut the bag at first the proper way uh, to have a good running angle. Uh, and, he, and he runs hard out of the box thinking two all the way. And, you know, he, he's done that a number of times over the last, you know, few weeks, especially here at home. But, uh, you know, that's something that, that comes with, uh, you know, his type of game. And he knows uh, that when he hits the ball down the left field line, there's an opportunity for two. And sometimes it's can be a little risky depending on the, you know, the skill level of the left fielder and the left fielder's throwing arm. But, you know, that, again, is, so, is something we talk about pre-series and all those things. So, but, uh, you know, I love the aggressiveness from him. Uh, we've talked about that. Uh, there's always a risk-reward at times with, with tap. Um, but I think that he's always pushing the envelope. I think he's always applying pressure on the defense. And that ultimately is a positive for us. Uh, when you apply pressure on the defense, uh, whether it's via the stolen base, uh, how you run the bases, I think the defenders get a little a little tentative and they get a little edgy. And you might see the bobble, you might see the, the, the hurried throw. Uh, all those things come into play. And will you get thrown out every now and then? Yes. But I think uh, the, the aggressiveness outweighs, you know, those times when uh, you might get thrown out. And in regard to, uh, to Kyle Freeland, uh, he's gotten hit pretty hard two games in a row now. Uh, simply a matter, we know Kyle has to be, you know, he's not going to overpower guys. He's got to hit his spots. Was that right. the problem again tonight? Yeah, I think the yeah the Tatis on the run was was up. The changeup was up out over the plate, and he's done that to a lot of pitchers. It was a really good at bat by Grisham uh, for uh, the opposite field home run. Uh, you know that ball was intended to be a little bit down uh, and away from him. I think it just creeped up enough, and with uh, with two strikes, he barreled it and you know hit it, uh, squared it up, and hit it uh, oppo. But uh, again, I think uh, the third inning today, I think, might have took a little bit out of, out of Kyle as he, as he went into the fourth. It was a it was a hard third inning, a lot of pitches, uh, and here comes the heart of their order again. And he just couldn't quite get the ball to good spots. But you know, for me, I think his stuff is fine. Uh, I think his delivery is fine. It's just a matter of just fine tuning that location, and and we'll continue to get out after it, uh, and hopefully uh, the next his next start. I believe it's in Seattle. Uh, you know, we'll see a, a different outcome. And one more for me, buddy. Did uh, John Gray, did he do a, uh, a bullpen or a sim game or anything today? No, he's going to throw up. He's going to throw up a side session tomorrow. And uh, if that goes well, uh, we're going to talk about maybe sending him uh, with the Albuquerque team to make one rehab start. Right. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Go to Danielle next. Go ahead, Danielle. Hey, buddy, with Kyle Freeland, do you think he just needs more time to get back into the use of this? Or, like, what do you think he's going to need to do to get back to hitting his spots? Well, you're right. I, I, I think that it's, uh, you know, right now he's in a little bit of a, uh, a situation where things aren't going his way. And I, I think the first couple innings, I think we saw, uh, you know, what we can get out of Kyle. You know, the first, you know, the first hit was a ground ball that eluded Fuentes on the dive. Then he got the, you know, the double play, nice play by Hampson. Then there was a couple soft contacts for outs. Uh, you know, in the third inning, Machado, I mean, uh, Tatis hit the hang and change up. That was a, you know, that was a bad pitch. But, uh, again, he's got to string pitches together, uh, you know, during the course of a game. And there's certain at-bats that are critical where he has to, you know, be a pitch maker. And he's very capable. Uh, we've seen it before, uh, you know, right now things aren't going his way, but it can turn, uh, you know, can turn on a dime and it can turn as, as quickly as his next start. And Trevor Story's timing seems to be better during this series. Um, do you think he's passed that little slump he went to when he came off the IL? Yeah, Trev's getting a little closer uh, for sure. Uh, you, you, we've seen some opposite field base hits. Uh, that means that he's getting closer to timing up fastball. I think he's seeing the ball better. It's been reflected in the, a couple walks. 
uh, you know, the, the, the chase uh, has not been prevalent the last number of games. So I sense he's getting closer to being the real Trevor Story. Thank you. Yep. Last one, we'll go to Dwayne. Go ahead, Dwayne. Hey, buddy. Uh, Tyler Kinley came up with uh, two innings of scoreless relief for today to kind of continue a, a stretch where he's done very well for you out of the bullpen. Could you talk a little bit about his development uh, for you uh, this season? Yeah, that was, I mean, that was sort of uh, an underrated part of uh, the game today was his two scoreless innings in the seventh and eighth, you know, big innings, right? They got, they came back to seven to six on Cronenworth's home run. Uh, so there it is in the seventh and eighth inning. Uh, in a game that looked like there was a lot of runs going to be scored, and and he held them uh, right there with two zeros. Uh, that was big. Uh, that was big for for Tyler to get us to to Carlos. Uh, very important uh, today. But I think Ky uh, Tyler, uh, we've seen uh, you know recent outings a little bit more consistent strike throwing, a little bit more consistent ahead in the count. Uh, you hear me talk every day about some pitching principles. I think that applied today. Uh, the ball strike ratio was great. He, he was on the attack with early count strikes. You know, he was he was solid. He was good today, and he's very capable of that. So uh, when you talk about a nine-man bullpen and you talk about guys contributing and stringing appearances together, uh, Tyler Kinley is, uh, you know, pulling his weight. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, thanks guys. Time, buddy. How are you? You think it's just a matter that of just relaxing a little bit, maybe? Because I mean, you have a couple pretty good innings, and then it, it seemed like some things go wrong. Is it is it more trying to force the issue at times? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Thank you. Go to Thomas Hardy next. Go to Thomas. Well, um, in, in your last couple of innings, you would get the two outs and just a couple of things would happen that you didn't have much luck. At times when you're not hitting the location, how important is getting a little bit of luck until you can stabilize things? I mean, just places like that, usually the luck thing comes into play when you, you know, will things to happen. Um, Obviously, you know, trying to have clean innings, trying to have one, two, three innings, um, be efficient with my pitches. Um, but, you know, like you said, I'll get, you know, one quick out or, or two quick outs, and somehow, some way, things would, you know, slightly snowball on me. Um, why? I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Some of the off-speed pitches, whether they're change-ups or sliders or a couple of those today, um, some of them hung in the zone. Some of them look like balls right out of your hand. Um, do you feel like that it's in the delivery, or what is it that, that that is kind of robbing you of the consistency where you have some deception in the zone? And with the change-up and slider right now, it's, it's hit or miss. Um, some sliders are well executed out of my hand and feel good, even if they're, you know, taken for a ball. Um, it, it feels right to out of my hand. You can see the correct action. Other ones, you know, try to, uh, you know, duplicate that same pitch and it, it backs up. Right? It's up in the zone. It's, it's in the zone. It's, it's not a quality pitch. And, you know, more times than not, as you saw, it gets hit. Same thing with the changeup where there's times I hit and it feels good. And, you know, it's a called strike or a foul or, or whatever. You're taking for a ball, but it was a quality change up. And then other times it just felt like it just floated in the zone. When that does happen, is that, have you been able to kind of do a diagnostic to figure out if it's in the delivery, in the grip or something? Uh, obviously, that's where you could figure out where it is. Have, have you gotten anywhere with that as far as diagnosing where it is to where you make that fix? Um, continue to work on that. Um, I, again, I, I, I don't know. I, if I knew, I, I would make the adjustment in game and in, in the side, in my side sessions in between starts. Um, I, I just got to keep trying to find, um, proper release point, proper 
you know, grip, proper turnover on pitches, and and work from there and try and you know get to that feeling of that's correct. Now do it again and do it again and do it again. That's one for me. Does it feel better sitting here talking about it when uh, the team comes back and wins a high scoring game? Yeah, I mean it's, it's definitely better than a loss. Thanks, Kyle. Go to Patrick Saunders. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, Kyle, just one follow up to Thomas's question. Uh, you're, he was talking about diagnosing things, et cetera. Uh, you're a veteran now. You've been around, tasted quite a bit of success. Uh, do you think the experience you have now uh, will allow you, say, your next side or your next couple of starts to, uh, to get a feel for this and, and make a pretty quick correction, given that you, you're an experienced pitcher now? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I have a pretty – Good idea. I thought I had a pretty good idea coming into today of the adjustments I needed to make. Um, a few things felt better today. A few things felt the same. Um, but yeah, I just got to keep trying to make that adjustment and figure out uh, what is going to be right for me and going forward to you know get back to weak contact, swing and misses, round balls, staying out of the zone um, in my spots, executing pitches. Um, it's just it's going to come down to continuing to diagnose myself, diagnose my pitches, pitch mix, all that. Thank you, Kyle. Go to Danielle for our last question. Go ahead, Danielle. Hey, Kyle, just a quick follow up. Um, are, do you feel the same in your side sessions and when you're in the game? Yeah, I mean, my, my last side session, I. I made some adjustments um, after looking at, you know, certain things from a numbers standpoint, from a physical standpoint, from a delivery standpoint. Um, made a few adjustments in that side session. Side session felt good in Cincinnati. Carried those over into today. Like I said, there's there's a few things that felt better today. Um, but again, there, there are also a lot of things that, felt the same um, you know, from the previous start that I need to continue to adjust on. Thank you. Yeah, hey, Trev, I don't know if you remember, but today's the uh, two-year anniversary of that really wild, really high-scoring Padres series here. Um, I remember how exhausting it was for everybody. Um, you know, after a sweep like this against a really good team, um, is it? Do you, are you feeling? Uh, are you feeling that uh, not only not only that it was a, a good sweep, a good win uh, for your team, but also that you like survived in really good shape? Yeah, um, you know, we played really well here, and um, you know, we you feel really good about you know the way we played that series. Um, a really good team coming in. Uh, the way we played was uh, was pretty clean, so. Yeah, man, we're, we're, we're pretty confident right now, and uh, we'll, we'll try to ride that out. But, yeah, I do remember that series. That was, uh, that was a crazy one, um, kind of a turning point for that season, I think, and hopefully uh, this can be the same for this. Yeah, awesome, man. Thank you. Go to Thomas Hardy next. Go ahead, Thomas. Trev, uh, you guys are a kind of a strange team to follow because of the home road thing. Do you – at times, when you win at home, it seems like the fans, us in the media, we kind of look, yeah, but the road. But do you guys try to put all that out of your mind and just enjoy it? The fact that you guys just swept the San Diego Padres and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, we're definitely, you know, going to enjoy that. Um, you know, we, we don't feel bad about it. I promise you that. Um, <laughs> you know, wins are tough to come by in this league. And, um, you know, it's they are league, so anytime you come come about them, you know whether they're pretty ugly, home or road, doesn't matter. Um, we, we certainly enjoy it every home. Yeah, this was a little bit of a different win from a lot of them, where you see kind of the the more established players kind of carry you. Today, you you did have a big game, um, and and so did Tapia, but. You started some of the guys, you're able to sit Charlie, you're able to sit Mac and still have a good offense throughout. Is this one that can have a kind of a bounce 
a bounce effect for future games. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, you know, I think Goody and Mac and, and Charlie, you know, they out, they've been grinding, man. They've been, you know, doing their thing the whole season, and um, you know, those are those are well deserved. And anytime we can pick them up uh, when they're they're not in there, that's always a, a huge advantage for us. Um, if we can win games like that uh, with those two guys on the lineup, that's that's pretty big. And I, I kind of go back to spring training. I think um, your first home run or your first couple of home runs were opposite way shots. Um, the fact that you're able to drive a ball the opposite way uh, for, for a couple hits today, what kind of sign is that for you right now as far as trying to get back to, uh, to, what, to the field that you want to have? Yeah, it's a good sign. Um, but yeah, I think more than anything, just kind of controlling my zone. Um, and uh, you know, I felt like I did a good job of that this series, and uh, I had some walks. And those are always good. Uh, so, yeah, something to build on for sure, and um, keep it rolling. I guess one last thing on this. Uh, I think it was last night. Was I think it was last night, Charlie, with the slide. You're able to steal a base today. Um, how big is it for, for for this team, and especially for some of the younger guys, that you can be aggressive on the base paths and not be afraid to be aggressive. Yeah, that's, you know, part of our, uh, as a team, I think, is stealing bases. You know, with Hamby, Tapia, Chuck. Um, we have a lot of guys that can do it. So, today was a good example of that. You know, Tap, Tap's been doing his thing. Hamby's been doing his thing. I think it just creates another element for us, uh, you know, to where a single, you know, scores a run as opposed to having a slug. Thank you very much, Trev. Go to Kevin Henry. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey, Trevor, I know uh, today with the RBI, you hit 400 for your career. Uh, so congratulations for that. Is that uh, milestone a little uh, better to enjoy after a, a sweep and a win? Thank you. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, any, like I said, anytime uh, we win, it, you know, we're going to enjoy that. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a cool uh, accomplishment. But, uh, yeah, on, on to the next. And then I, I think I heard on the post-game TV that you guys gave the MVP chain to uh, Kinley today. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Can we, you uh, talk a little bit about, yeah, sorry. It felt like TK, you know, kind of had the, the innings that, you know, um, kind of shut down the momentum there. And uh, the two, you know, both ends have been great. Bailey, so, yeah, like he, he got some of the most important, important outs of that game. And, um, we're able to get ahead. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Go to Patrick Saunders. Go ahead, Patrick. Hey, Trevor. Uh, can you describe or characterize the level of confidence that you guys have currently at, at Coors Field? Uh, because you certainly make it difficult for teams to come in here. Can you just describe in your view what that confidence level is? Yeah. Um, it's high, you know, obviously, and I think we're, our play shows that, um, you know, I think just something about being at home in general, you know, no matter where that's at, um, you know, you, you have a better feeling, you know, you sleep in your own bed, you get to do all the things kind of, you know, on your time. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, the confidence is really high, high at home, obviously, and uh, love the way we're playing out. It just seems like, uh... And obviously it's because you're winning, but the energy level uh, seems to be just really high with you guys at Coors Field on the base paths, everything else. I mean, you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, like obviously it comes from having success. Um, yeah. We feel like, you know, we're, we're, we're playing really good ball at home, obviously. And, Obviously, the challenge is to, to create that on the road. Uh, but, you know, right now we have it at home. You know, it's hard to, you know, articulate exactly what, what is going on there. But, um, yeah, I mean, we're going to ride that out at home and, and do what we can and work our butts off to, to figure it out on the road. Great. Thank you. Any last questions for Trev, guys? A couple seconds to give. If anyone wants to put their hand up. I'm going to back to Thomas. Go ahead, Thomas. Uh, yes, 
Rommel Tapia, it seemed even on the road trip, he was getting the same kind of hits where he was using his bat to ball skills, hitting the ball the other way. Today, he drove one. When you watch him bat, what is it about him that uh, that's, that seems to allow him to um, continue to have success no matter how the defense plays or how he's pitched? Yeah, Taps is a player, man. <clears throat> um, an amazing competitor. He brings it you know, every single day, every single at bat. He expects a lot out of himself. Uh, and he's He's probably my favorite guy to watch right now. Um, just, uh, you know, he, he knows his swing. He knows uh, you know, what his goal is, and he doesn't stray from that. He doesn't try to do too much. Um, I think you know, it helps him um, do a lot of hits. You know, he's a special and fun player to watch. And, you know, he can use his legs to uh, stretch some, some singles and just doubles for the, for the slug. So it's, he's, been, he's been great. It's been fun to watch. The last one for me, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about Charlie. It seems that whenever Charlie accomplishes something, he's got a lot of historical feats around here, but also when he wins a game for you, how much of a charge does that, does that give you kind of seeing him step up and make plays? Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, I don't want to say expected, but man, I've seen it so many times that you, you just have a great feeling when he's up there and, you know, he loves that moment, and you know he he, he never lets it get the best of him. And uh, he's a guy that's that's been really clutch for us you know, ever since I've been here. So uh, anytime he's up, uh, really really have great feelings about him. And, uh, yeah, just just fun to watch him. Thanks, Trevor.